Hello, welcome, welcome, USU listeners, my soul family all around the globe at this point. I'm so honored and grateful to be here with you today. You are in for such an extraordinary treat. I cannot wait for you to get to know uh, our guest today. Um, it's going to be just a very uplifting, beautiful conversation. So thank you for spending your time with us. Thrilled to be here with you. And let me tell you about who you're about to meet. Welcome, Dr. Mark Mincola. He is a nutritional therapist and quantum energy healer who has transformed the lives of more than 60,000 people over the last 35 years. Through his innovative genius, he has integrated ancient Chinese energy healing techniques with cutting edge nutritional science in what he calls electromagnetic muscle testing, a one of a kind approach that zeroes in on each individual's unique nutritional needs. Dr. McCullough was awarded the Divine Contribution to Humanity Award in 2021, and his movie was awarded the Best Health Awareness Film of 2021. He has authored seven international best-selling books, amazing, to date, uh, and Dr. McCullough has appeared on Dr. Oz, Better TV, WFXT, Fox 25 Boston, KCBS in Los Angeles, along with numerous national TV and radio shows and in regional and national magazines. We are also welcoming today Christina Versillo Brisson, who has been in production, filmmaking, and visual storytelling for 25 years. After studying visual arts and earning a BFA from Rutgers University, Mason Gross School of the Arts, she began her career in post-production. In 2006, she launched her own production company in New York City, 3-1 Creative. Her own company's groundbreaking work has won industry recognition, including Promax, BDA, Tele, and Emmy Awards. Her company's high-profile clients includes most major networks and media branches, including Nickelodeon, MTV, VH1, Food Network, NBC, ESPN, and Scientific American. So honored, so honored to have both of you uh, here today. I absolutely loved the, the film, The Way of Miracles. And uh, also, we'll just do a little shout out. I have Dr. McCullough's book, The Way of Miracles, with my little bookmark. Um, <laughs> and just honored to have you both here. I think in this time right now, this conversation couldn't be more important to really talk about healing and miracles and ways that we can really tap into our own, our own abilities to, to be well and uh, to feel our best and be our best. So thank you both. What a gift. Thanks for having us. Grandness. Beautiful to be here. Well, I thank you. I, 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 thought what might be helpful is um, maybe just to start, you know, this, this film was really powerful. Um, and I know, so we've, we have interviewed, I know that it was, uh, I believe it premiered at the Illuminate Film Festival, Christina and Danette, who is actually a dear friend and has been on the show as well. Um, and many of the listeners know about Illuminate Film Festival, but may not have seen the, the film yet. Maybe just to start with the impetus, the what, what, um, how did you get the idea to do this film? What was it like filming it? And what did you learn from that experience? Cause it was very, very powerful. Oh, well, thank you. Thanks for saying that. Um, so Mark actually reached out, he was looking to tell his, his story and he reached out and, um, I, I didn't know too much about Mark at the time. And I, I just started to look into all of his amazing work, his years of healing and his commitment to healing. And I was like, this is a beautiful story to, to tell. So, and, but what we also wanted to do was connect it um, to the science of today. We really wanted to weave in where the science is so that we could bring East and West together and, you know, is it just a perfect opportunity to do that and share these healing stories, which, and I think it's the stories, hopefully, that um, change the hearts and minds of people. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah. I, so Dr. Mancola, I, I'm just, maybe you could share a little bit about your story. When did you start discovering your abilities to help healing at this level? Uh, you know, this is one of those, like, tell us all about you and your whole life. I don't, I know that that's a big open, wide open question. You can start wherever you want, but your, your gift is so precious and, you know, clearly 
there's just, <laughs> it's just beautiful to watch and would love to hear how did this even evolve? You can start wherever you want. You know, a number of years ago, I, I just decided that my brother was actually, my older brother was actually suffering from heart disease. He was 35 when he suffered his first heart attack. I was 22 at the time. And I was so stunned. I was so shocked. He had open heart surgery and it just, the whole thing blew my mind, completely blew my mind. But the way he was treated, his limitations in terms of treatment options and things like that, the way the physician spoke to him, the way he was addressed, the way his situation was unfolded, was just absolutely something that's it shocked me, it stunned me. And I just said, there, there needs to be a better way to, to deal with this. I was, I was so blown away by my brother being sick to begin with, but then the way that, they, that he was tr being treated, this was so un unacceptable to me. So I just thought maybe I should shift my major from business to nutrition. So I decided to shift my, my major in college from business to nutrition. I studied nutrition as best I could at that time. A lot of reference library work, let's put it that way. But I did my studying and I just did the best I could to help my brother. And I counseled him. The, for the first time I ever counseled anybody was my brother in the hospital. But long story short, as my brother got better, he improved. He, just, he decided to start working out again and eating better and changed his life radically. But that was the first, uh, uh, my first attempt at trying to make a difference to somebody. And I just decided that, that it made such a difference in my brother's life, it's such an incredible difference that I needed to do that more. So that started the whole program rolling for me. And then I finished my, my college work, my undergraduate work, my graduate work in nutrition. And I decided that I was gonna do this for a living. The very first day that I showed up at work, there were like 10 people showed up at my door in the middle of Cohasset, Massachusetts. Now who in Cohasset, Massachusetts knows anything about holistic medicine? Nobody, nobody. But it was just an incredibly mind-blowing experience. I, I, I'm opening the door and the people are knocking on the door, knocking on the door. I, I said, where are these people coming from? But right from day one, we were crowded with, with interest. It's astounding, really, really astounding. So I started working with people right away and started making a difference right away. But I just unfolded in the process. My expectations were altered as I went along. It starts with compassion. It, it, the compassion, heartfelt compassion leads the way. So my compassion, my care about people, I care a lot about people. I have a heart. And I decided that early on that I'd listen to what I could through my heart. And, and if something in the world said, you can't do that, you can't do that, the world's expectations are so limited, they're so conservative, medical expectations are so conservative, so limited, so scientifically limited, if you will. I said, I can't, I can't go there. I, I got to operate from my internal place. My internal compass led me through the process. So if I thought I could help somebody and I'd use my intuition and whatnot, that, that, that was, that's what I did. I used my intuition, my, my inner sense, my heartfelt nature took, took charge. And I helped people right off the bat in ways that you're not supposed to be able to help people. So I developed a world. I live in a world where everything's different. And in my world, everything's possible. And I think Christina helped me tell a beautiful story like nobody ever, could, no, nobody else could have. You know, she did a beautiful job capturing the beautiful nature of that story that everything's possible. And our souls and our hearts are where we lead our lives from. And that's where, that's where magical miracles take place at the deeper level of, of self. Oh, so, so beautiful. I, you know, I'm laughing because I, first of all, I'm from Boston originally. When I was watching this, I'm like, he's got to be from Boston. I could hear a little something in your in the accent. And I'm like, oh, I loved it. Maybe, I was like, I wish I still lived in that area. It brought me home. Um, and I love your story that like, who would be into nutrition there? And then a lot of people and you, that you, you, you live in a world where all is possible. This is what you showed. And, and Christina, what you did such a beautiful job showing where all of these stories where, you know, we're trained to see some of those situations as health crisis is like, there's, how is she going to get better? She's not going to be able to, or, you know, there's a certain protocol or you, you we're trained to, to have a certain thought. And I, just, you could feel Dr. McCullough, your heart leading the way. I literally was watching. I have to be honest. I was like bawling during half of it. Um, and then I would start to feel embarrassed. And I'm like, why am I embarrassed? Like, I'm just, I'm watching you lead and heal with your heart. And it was really touching. It was really touching. Well, when hearts, I, hearts talk to hearts, hearts always address other hearts. Oh, that's beautiful. I've never heard that, that my heart's like, yeah, <laughs> I like that. <laughs> it's resonating. Yeah. I, <laughs> I'm literally, as I'm doing this, I'm like, you know, you can feel your, my body. I'm like, oh, she likes that. Yep. Hearts talk to hearts. I love that. That is beautiful. How did you, I'm actually curious if it's okay to talk for a minute, you brought up intuition. It's something I'm, we talk about a lot here. And for those listening, did you do anything to 
tune into your intuition? Do you feel like you're especially intuitive? Christine, I'm curious if your intuition cracked open while you were putting this together, because that's such a cornerstone of what you were saying is so part of this healing. Do you want to go first, Mark, or do you want me to go first? Okay. Um, Well, I think that it's part of your intuition is being connected to a deeper part of yourself. And, you know, just bringing it back to healing in the Western in our in the Western world, we are very focused on the material medicine, and we're not really um, dealing with the more the more subtle levels of self and going inward. And and we have a whole part of this in the film where you're really building a relationship with your inner world, and that's and that's done that's done through a daily practice. And that's really where you can develop your intuition. But sure, everyone has that uh, naturally there, some more than others. And the more that you, be, well, first you have to be aware of it. And then you have to, uh, every day, have a practice where you um, build a deeper relationship until you, you know, you know self as, as your soul self. And we have that also at the end of the film, you know, you're d- building that relationship and that trust and, and, and then there's a reorientation of self is really what happens. And that intuition is, um, you know, maybe coming from what you would say is your higher self. Yeah. Well, people call it d- different things. Yeah. yeah there's, a, there's a journey that we, we can go on from cell to soul. And I think that most of us are on a cellular journey in this culture. It's a material world. It's a mechanistic culture. But there's a whole world that we've left out of the equation. It's a world of soul, and it's a world of internal source. It's a world of imagination. It's a world of creativity. It's a world of mind. It's a world of depth. It's a, it's a world of consciousness. It's a world of limitless consciousness, infinite blessings. Those are the realities that we can actually open up to and let them lead us, let them lead our, our awareness, let them lead our direction into a whole different world, into a whole different concept. But everything's possible in that world of possible, in that world of intuition. And intuition is a natural byproduct of going, going into your soul, going into your deeper pro- properties, like Christina said. She's absolutely right about that. My question, that's such a great way to say it. I haven't heard it said like that. And for those listening who are like, okay, how do I deepen my intuition? How do I, frankly, maybe even use the word, get that, shift your, your programming to really getting all is possible because I think was there was there did you always feel that way, Dr. Mancola, or did you have a point where you just started to see shifts and miracles? Maybe to share um, kind of how you've created that 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 world because to me it's for all of us to have that. Um, you gotta I, believe in, it. My, in my fifth book, my fifth book, which is um, which one? Is, the whole health is right. The white book, the cream book. In whole health, I wrote an interesting story about. It. I was twelve years old. I was in the car with my mother driving up to Massachusetts. We lived in Binghamton, New York, upstate New York. Drove up to Massachusetts to see my brother. He and his wife just had their first baby. So I'm 12 years old and I'm driving in the car. I'm looking out the window and everything's going, zooming by, zooming by. And I went into a trance and I saw my whole life unfold. I saw myself growing up and moving to Massachusetts, becoming a doctor. I saw the whole thing. I I truly did. I truly did. I told my mother this. My mother said, that's nice, honey. (laughs) That's all she could say is that's nice. And I said, mom, I really, I mean this. I really, I really saw my whole life. That's great. So it was kind of interesting that my mother was not not tuned into my my vision, but I, I was early in early in life I was actually open to the fact that I could tune into to life in a timeless manner, and I, I've always been a an advocate and a practitioner in the sense of tuning into my inner self. I always I have a, an inner inner connection with myself. And I can go to those inner places. Everybody can, of course, like Christina said, she's right. We can all go to those inner places. I started at a very early age tapping into that earlier awareness, those earlier messages, those earlier possibilities. And I, I surely have gotten accustomed to it and used to it. And it's, it leads the way in my work now. It's, it's absolutely the most important part of my work. Do you find, um, it's that's so amazing about your story, by the way. I love that your mom was like, that's nice, dear. <laughs> sure thing. That's great, honey. <laughs> that's lovely. We're going to keep driving. <laughs> um, do you at this point, well, I guess one of the questions, because I, I sometimes hear questions that are being asked and I, what I'm hearing is how do I do this? How do I get this inner world connection? Like that you have, and that you were talking, Christina, you have, um, what are ways, what are some ways that we can do that? What are some maybe calm tools, but things that you have done that have helped to build that, um, deeper 
you know, relationship with yourself and your inner world. So we touch on it briefly in the film, like maybe a couple lines. <laughs> we didn't get to focus too much on in this film, but it's a, it, a lot of it's in Mark's book. Um, but one of the ways is meditation. Really, you want to quiet the mind because we're so used to living um, our lives with chatter going on, our to-do lists, our constant. And that, that's what you want to take a break from so that you can open up a space at, to allow your deeper sense self sense of self to come through not the um your subconscious patterning that's you know constantly constant chatter um, which we touch on a little bit in the film which we, we call it you know when you're in your beta brainwave state and it's your constant to-do list and we, we do that throughout the day and it's really important to have time every day to have quiet time and that's really where you start to build that relationship. I also have a yoga practice that I do, and you can also do qigong, so movement, breath work, pranayama work, um, meditation, having time for, for self care and building that relationship with self. That's that's what I would say. Book I mentioned an interesting exercise in the book. I think it's interesting. But what I ask pay, pay readers to do: go to the nearest mirror. Go to the nearest mirror. And just look in that mirror. Don't just look in the mirror. Look the center of your eyes, looking into the center of your eyes, eye to eye, core to core, nucleus to nucleus. Look in your core in, in, in just 10 minutes worth of feeling the essence of your being. 10 minutes worth of feeling the essence of your being. Feeling the essence of your being. Get going, get, get, tuning out all the noise, like Christina said, all the chatter, all the monkey mind, and just focus on the eyes. Look in your eyes and tap into the fact that there's a, there's a being there. There's a soul there. There's a, there's a, there's a matter of it's a matter of tapping into the energetic beingness, the energy of your beingness. Just feel it. Feel the essence. That's your soul. That's who you are. That just eliminates all the, all the confusion. That eliminates all the distraction. It eliminates all the, 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 the gunk. That just clears you right up and straight, strains you right out. It's, it's incredible. Do that every day, 10 minutes every day. I... Um... You know, these are so, these are so powerful. These examples. What I love is that they're, um, you know, you don't have to pay for it. You, you got a mirror. Everyone's has a mirror somewhere. I hope <laughs> some, I'm sure in the U S someone, everyone has a mirror probably around the globe too. Um, you know, I have to say to, to that, that, um, practice it's interesting. I, I've been doing that for a long time. Not every day. I actually have never done 10 minutes. I'm like, I'm going to try that. I'm going to try 10 minutes with myself. And I have found um, there are times it's brought like crying and emotion. And I mean, it's amazing what comes up. There are other moments I'm like, who is this? Like, how did this happen? Like, what's, you know, it's so, um, I love that practice. I love that practice. And there's an interesting part of that, that process. Look in that mirror, like we said, until you can see yourself, you see your soul. But then before you close your eyes, before you turn away from the mirror, Become what you see. Become what you see. Mm. Don't just see it. Become what you see. Oh, my heart loved that. <laughs> it's like, do that. That's beautiful. That's so beautiful. In terms of, you know, there's a lot that you go through in this book and in the film. I, I just tried to pull out um, some of the some of the questions or thoughts I had that would be interesting to talk about, and also leave space if there's anything we don't discuss because there's these stories that you cover in the film are honestly alone just to watch and feel inspired and really feel the essence of what you're saying dr mancola about all is possible this is what you it, you know christina that's, you depicted that's, this that's the world that waits for you yeah what are you waiting for i mean everybody that i say that to i mean the world what are you waiting for that's the world that waits for you what are you waiting for what are you what are you postponing mm -hmm. why, why are you postponing it it's why, what do you, why don't you trust it? Experiment, take a step every day, take a step closer every day, mm. live with it, open up to it. How might we experiment and take a step closer? Now I'm getting all like, give, give, say more about that. Cause I think I'm really, I feel like this is going to resonate. Like how do we, what might be a way to, to test it or take a step closer? Two, 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 two things, two things. It begins with service. Secondly, take a risk. So take a risk in service. Mm. It's got to have compassion. That opens up the heart. Compassion has the, the, is the key to the heart. 
So to have the compassion that you care about somebody, you want to make a difference in their life. I don't care if they have a migraine headache, whatever it is, service, compassion, and, and, you, and you sacrifice. You, you, you give yourself and you, and you give up your expectations that are limited. All, all your programming, give it up. Take a, take a risk. Believe, take the risk to believe. Have total faith in your being. Take the risk to have total, total faith in your, in your soul and your capability of breaking beyond the, the, the margins and the barriers, the limitations. Break through the threshold. Break through that threshold. But take a risk. Service and risk. I love that. Excellent. Service, really, compassion, heart. I mean, you can hear that coming through. Um, it's got it's to it's swell. It's got to be big. It's got to be, you have to take a risk. Do something you, you, you could never imagine yourself doing, but do it with a sense of faith, a sense of belief, mm. a sense of trust. I feel like I'm going to clip this out. Just this, what you just <laughs> put it in my, start listening every morning in my ear. I was like, I need to hear that. <laughs> I love what you just said. I heard it as a little, like, you know, almost like a mantra. mantra. <laughs> I was like, we're going to pull that out. I think it's a little soundbite for mm-hmm. myself and everyone else. <laughs> um, I love what you're saying. I, 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 I want to ask you when you have patients that come in you know, with, we'll call them quote unquote, incurable situations, diseases, all kinds of, um, do you, I actually am curious on a couple levels. Do you actually see them fully healed already? Do you, what is that like for you in this world of, I love what you're saying. Possibility is we're all meant to be well, right. And that possibility of in anything's possible, I guess. How, How do you, how do you, how are you being with a patient that may be coming in with something very extreme? Um, whatever I that might be. I, I, I look at the part of them that's indestructible. With mm-hmm. my part, that's with my indestructibility. Mm-hmm. So I take my indestructible soul and I look in theirs and we're working soul to soul. You can't work at a, at a, at a level that, that can't provide the proper energy for what you're trying to do. You can't, you can't mm-hmm. be superficial. It can't be material. It can't be mechanistic. You can't do that. You have to work with your soul and you have to address their soul. It's got to be soul to soul. Yeah. And I've, I've been in, the, in an office with Mark when he's with a patient and he just exudes this level of deep caring and this unconditional love. And I imagine it takes a lot for him. I don't, I don't know how he does it, to be honest with you, because it seems like there's a lot of discipline of, of grounding when you're seeing patient after patient after patient, but he just has such a, a caring, deep caring presence. And um, he just can just, he just looks right into your soul. And I've just seen people open up to this space of love that he's really holding for them. You know, that's what I've witnessed with him. Well, the compassionate component of that, there's also a, a confidence. It's not, it's not, a, it's not an ego confidence. It's a soulful confidence because these people matter so much. Every life is so precious. Every moment of every life is precious. And for anybody to lose one moment of life to pain and suffering is unreasonable. That starts the process. Yeah. That, starts, that starts the inspiration. So my question is, how do we do this for ourselves? Um, you're, you know, I know because people have written in to me, whether they're struggling with a ailment or, you know, disease or anxiety or fear. There's a lot of all of that going on or, um, you know, something going on, whether it's a diagnosis or whatever that might be. So let's say if we're not, you know, haven't had the ability yet to go see you being with ourselves like that, do you, how do you, how do you, how do you hold your, I mean, I have thoughts on it, but I'm curious what you would say to somebody, um, how to hold themselves the way you're seeing them. Cause ultimately I would imagine that's yeah. Two things, two things. Number one, number one, you want to make sure that you tap into the fact that there's two of you. There's not, there's not one self, there's two selves. There's a more a mortal self and an immortal self. Your mortal self is a sinner. It's, it's an, it's, it's constantly an error. It's a mess. It's, it's, it's always out of order. Your, your, your immortal self is always perfect. You have a soul, you have an, an ego. And, you, and as long as you're working within the soul self, there's limitless possibilities in terms of love and in terms of self-love. If I, if I think about loving myself, I gotta love. I gotta love myself at the at the soul level, not the ego level. Souls are not not very level. I mean, egos are not very level. E- egos are just not lovable at all. They really aren't. There's nothing lovable about an ego. There's a lot lovable about a soul. Soul has infinite love. It just it's infinite love. 
So to, to, to feel that love of your soul is to appreciate yourself and love yourself. That begins your process of openness, of healing. You begin healing with, with true love of self, and that's to love your soul. Beautiful. So it sounds like it, it's really getting, I love this. I haven't heard it said this way. The ego is kind of the, the mortal, the, the earthly right, right, right. soul versus the, you know, the, the infinite. Um, but the, the first step to healing is to overcome your identity crisis. You don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Woo! Say that again. That I'm the like, my... <laughs> the first step to healing is overcoming your identity crisis. You don't know who you are. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, re- I always say, re-identify your I. Mm-hmm. Who is your I? Wow. You say I all day long. Who is I? If I is ego, you, you know, there's no love there. There's no healing there. Mm-hmm. There's, there's only there's only need there's only need there that's all there's is need yeah wow the ego is there you know to protect you in some ways you know sure. you're, you so you don't want to be throwing so much judgment on it you know it's it's yeah but to operate from you know that as as true self isn't you want to go deeper you want to go deeper and you you know know that the part of your ego that is your ego self that is in these patterns that you might hate or you know have judgment for they're there they were there maybe for years to protect you and you can know it's okay you can tell yourself it's okay and then you begin by loving the soul and then you can then after a while you get good at loving the whole process There was a quote in here that I just pulled out. I don't know the page. Um, It basically was saying um, that what is healing? The quote was what is healing? And it basically said, asking anybody, any kind of healer in the end, it's love. I'm I'm paraphrasing. It was like in the, oh, right here. Nope, they all, the quotes all look the same. It's somewhere in the beginning of your book. I was like, woo, my body resonated with that. And so I guess my question to you is, to define or to really look at like that, that love, what I'm hearing, and I'm definitely resonating is that love. Once you, as you learn to love your whole higher self, and then also the whole process, is it that love that you're seeing Dr. McCullough and and Christina from what you witnessed, that is, that is the healing agent. Is that what we're really dealing with? It sure is. I mean, love, love is, love is, Love is a transcendent potion, you know. Love, love is is mm. pure transcendence. Love, love is love is heaven on earth. Yeah. And this is the thing that I think is interesting. It's something I've played with is knowing that, then I've got to be really, really mindful. And I'm thinking for all of us, am I really being loving to myself with some of the things I'm saying or not saying, or frankly, and then you know, when I go to fear, how can I be loving in that state of fear? And how, you know, how am I being loving to others? And even, you know, it's, it's, it's so fascinating to me because I would imagine it really does start with the internal. How much are you loving in within yourself? I think the important thing is to become the love. In other words, I don't want to separate myself from the concept of, I don't want to go to love. I don't want to make love happen. I want to actually become the love. Be so by the exercise in the mirror we talked about, the meditation that Christina talks about, become the love. I think even Mark that you have in the book, it's you're looking in the mirror and that's part of it, but he also has a whole meditation where you you're saying that you uh, love yourself. You know, that's that's all in the book as well. And you know, it's creating a space this space of love and so many people are bombarding themselves with judgment on themselves and, you know, your cells are listening, everything is listening. And so it's important to have, you know, we talk about compassion, um, which you start just by having gratitude. You can, you can start wherever you are. It's not like this big thing. Oh my gosh, how do I be loved? Just little steps little steps and all of a sudden you start to shift and you're like, Oh, that's, and then you really can experience what that is. And in, until you have the experience, it's, you know, it might seem like this huge task. How do I get there? Um, and it's little steps, little steps each day. In the Tai Chi circle, 
helps us to, to move into that, I think. The Tai Chi Circles it says, you know what, wholeness is about dark and light. And the celebration of the, of the wholeness of dark and light. It's not like we have to feel bad about the dark. That that's a that's a bad habit that somebody programmed us for. The objective mm -hmm. is to understand the wholeness is the key. And the wholeness is the beauty, the, the mutual compatibility of opposition between the dark and the light. So, so there's nothing to feel bad about. Mm. Um, I could hear you both speaking now for like <laughs> <laughs> for hours. I'm like, just keep, keep, keep sharing these. You know, it's interesting. And I think this is something I'm going to encourage everyone listening. Just notice your body. Cause as you're speaking, this is resonating. Like we started out when you said, um, hearts love other hearts. My, my body is just, I'm getting this like, yes, like chills. I, I mean the whole thing and it's resonating with every, you know, to me, that feels like this feels like truth. Right. And that it's ironic. The truth is really letting go of anything you've ever learned <laughs> or been programmed so that we can become, and I think of it as like beginners, empty, open, um, because that is, a, that is a different concept to celebrate the dark and the light most. And I'll be honest, I, I spent a long time where I was like, do not want to be in the dark at all, ever. Like, don't like it. Don't, I don't enjoy that. Um, and just what you just said, there's nothing, there's no wrong or right. There's nothing, there's no problem with it. It's exactly. Separation, se separation is an illusion. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, yeah. We're, we're talking about the wholeness. Again, the Tai Chi circle is a perfect metaphor. It's, it's yeah. the wholeness. It's a, it's a complete, it's not a semicircle. You can't have wholeness with the semicircle. If you mm -hmm. want to dwell on the white, on the white side of the semicircle, you're living in half a circle, half a universe. That doesn't work. Wholeness is, is the key. And Love find it. your peace and acceptance and trust and wholeness is just important. Mm. Are you, in terms of, um, I know one of the things you talked about was this PPF self-test. I thought that was fascinating. Um, the punch pushing the fist, it's a muscle testing, correct? correct, correct. Can we, can you talk a little bit about, um, I know you do muscle testing and you showed this in the film um, with your patients. I, I've used it in my life a bit. I, I want to learn more. And I, I think I know a lot of people listening. I've heard this as an interest is like, how do I, do, how do I do this? Um, and I was at home, I was reading, I was trying and I'm like, I'm going to ask him because I think I got it backwards. So maybe just to share a little bit about um, ways it's, that it's, we it's, can. It's, it's, it's a dialogue. You're keeping, you're, you're dialoguing between your mind and your body from mm. a, a practitioner between a practitioner and a, and a patient, either one, but you're trying to establish energetic answers energetic answers so when you talk about muscle testing you're looking at strength and weakness if something is strong and has resistance if it's weak it doesn't have resistance so there's the strength is a yes the resist, the weakness is, is a no so if i ask should i weak arm goes down that's the weakness there's, there's muscle resistance there so when you do the punch testing you put your hand in front of your chest like that and you keep it about an inch inch and a half away from your chest and i'm pushing it with my right hand so can i push and does it actually go into my chest is there, is there resistance? There is the question. Is there resistance? If there's not a resistance, that's a yes. If there's, if there's no resistance, it's a, it's a negative. It's a no. The same thing as muscle testing. Strength is a yes. Weakness is a no. Strength is a yes. Weakness is a no. So you're, you're basically just checking to see what your resistance is as you're, as you're pushing your hand into your chest. And if you get a strong res res resistance, that's a, that's a strong response. It's a yes. That's an affirmative answer. But you, you can actually get into heavy dialogue with that. And, you can, and, and by the way, you know, you're not going to be great at that the first time you do it, but if you keep working with it, you'll, you'll surprise yourself. You'll get better and better and better at it all the time. Just keep working with it. Yeah. You know, where I've seen this show up actually is with food for myself, um, is I can picture something or see it and I can feel sure. of course. the leaning and right. Which makes sense. I will tell you as somebody, I used to struggle. I talk openly with overeating. Um, I know you had a you had some people in the, the film, you know, struggled with overeating and over sugar and all that. And today, none of that. I can actually feel, um, I might think I want the cake, but my body is like, oh, hell no, you do not. We do not. Because it usually is a like, you know, I want it, my taste buds, you know, water mouth, and then my body is, moves back. And that's taken a little while, but I've noticed that's where I, I see it showing up. It's been very helpful is to learn how to do that. It's a nonverbal communication. It's like you yeah. said about hearts. Hearts speak to hearts. I think there's nonverbal communication that takes place all the time. 
So you're, yeah. you're speaking through your heart, you're receiving information, you're transmitting and receiving through your heart, through your energy field, your biofield. You, you work with these active biofields. We produce a lot of response all day long, all day long, about just like mm. you just said. You don't feel good about a food, probably leave it alone. Yeah, it's beautiful. I'm just wondering in terms of creating this film, Christina, and showing these miraculous cases, Dr. Mancola, anything else? I mean, just to share any any surprises or miracles that you experienced. I always think when you put your intention on a film that says the word miracle, I'm like, I, I, I'm assuming there were some miracles maybe or things that showed up for each of you um, in making this film that that you'd like to share about. Sure. I mean, once we named the film, it took on a life of its own, for sure. And it had an agenda. It had just the way it wanted to, to go. And as you know, as I'm a cr creating it and as a creator and being in New York, I definitely could be a little bit controlling about how it's going to happen, how I'm, I'm going to do things. And so this film did teach me a valuable <laughs> lots of valuable lessons, but that was one was that I, I did have to learn to surrender and go with the flow of how and, and tap into that even more subtle space of how this wants to go. And so there were lots of little lessons like that, lots of um, synchronicities along the way, things that, you know, just we didn't have planned and just, you know, lower locations, Mark, that just, you um, all of a sudden a location would not work out and we'd go for a drive and then the perfect location happened and just synchronicities throughout making the film. And so it was definitely, I don't know for Mark, but as I worked on it, it worked on me. It was like an alchemical process working on the film for sure, for sure. Oh, you're muted, Mark. I'm better, I'm better now. <laughs> Yeah. So did, what did you think, Mark, making the film? What was it like for you? Well, I think the thing that, that strikes me about that question is what I went through with the Lyme disease. Yeah. We're, we're making this film and Christy and I are mapping out this beautiful film to work with several patients who suffer from a number of different terrible conditions. And while we're thinking about presenting the world with these beautiful miracle stories about healing from diseases, in the middle of it, I actually was bitten by a Lyme tick. And I was actually contracted neuroborrelia. And I was paralyzed for the better part of two weeks. I was in terrible shape, terrible shape. I was, I was in really bad shape. Uh, that line progressed so quickly, so overnight. It was just horrible. I was on antibiotics, I was on a number of medications, nothing helped. And at one point I was in the hospital. I'd been in the hospital for quite a while. And I decided that I was just going to actually turn my whole life around in terms of the way I ate. I, I always ate pretty well and I always take my supplements and all that. But I decided I was going to really work on myself with, with love, with determination, just like I was with any patient. First time in my life I ever had to have compassion for myself to that degree, to that extent. And I had to love my, myself in ways that I never knew how to do before. Is is when I learned how to love myself because I had to to survive. And it was very powerful. But I I I, I beat the disease and I'm 100 percent back to back to life again because of that. But it was it was a horrible experience. But imagine in the middle of this film, I'm I'm planning on everybody else's diseases and I had to talk about my own. Incredible. Yeah. Oh, it's bringing tears to my eyes as I hear you talk about this. I did notice um, when you were, I think you were shaking or something was happening when you, and, and it intuitively, it's interesting because I'm like, something shifted. Is he okay? What's happening? And I'm, it's fascinating. I'm just thinking about my gosh, for someone who's a healer and of service, yet what I'm also hearing is while you wouldn't probably want to go through it ever again, the lesson was learning this self love at a different level. Um, and I just, I'm so grateful you're healed and okay. I, I actually had forgotten that was, that it happened, but, um, it sounds like that was a really powerful, maybe lesson or learning for you, Dr. McCullough. Sure it was, of course. It was all about love. And the other part of that is it helped me understand things about natural medicine that I didn't know before because I was so focused and so intent on learning and growing and evolving. And it was such an emergency scenario, such a powerful episode in my life. I had to learn things that I never knew before. And I've applied those things to so many people since that time that have helped hundreds of people with wow. new with new information, with new, newly inspired information. What are some of those? Is there any information that you learned firsthand that, that would be easy to implement for anyone listening who maybe? I mean, sure, simple things like for people with Lyme disease, there's a company called Nutramedics. And I think they're one of the most remarkable companies. They produce a product that made all the difference in the world for me and for so many since then. 
but I never knew about that company. So, I mean, I, I think Nutramedics is, it was a great discovery for me not to plug somebody, but they got a great product and let them have the benefit. You know, yeah. I did, I, I studied, studied a lot of their product line and found this is amazing products, amazing products. I also found herbs, things like Hotunia, Kumanda, um, things that I never used before. Powerful herbs that are just immunologically so supportive, so powerful, so enhancing that they make big, they're huge difference makers. Amazing. Wow. Yeah. Thank you for sharing. I, um, in terms of the, I think what I'm also would love to know is, you know, taking this big concept, when we say love, there's the, okay, how do I like, you know, how do you, how do you infuse that? How do you, this, we talked about the eyes and the mirror. Did you, was there anything else you found yourself doing or a way of being that helped you to really just drink it in to, to feel that love for yourself. Anything new that you did that you could share? Yeah, for me, I was, I was discovering patterns. I was paying such, such close attention to my, my thoughts, my behaviors. I was finding old patterns that I was unconsciously un, out of tune with. Old mm -hmm. patterns about self-sabotage, self negativity, and things that I just don't do anymore. Things that I, I, can, I tap right into them now, I track them down, and I, and I, I keep watchful eye over them now. Big difference maker. I mean, yeah. so much self, so much subconscious self-sabotage. Incredible. Completely the same. I had the same, same experience is that you, you, if, is, if the smallest step you can start with is just shifting into witnessing your thoughts and hearing the way that you speak to, speak to yourself, it's eye-opening. And we have a lot in the film. I mean, you, this is a film you could probably watch several times and get yeah. something new. It's, it has a lot of depth to it. And every time that I see someone that's watched it more than once, they're like, I got all this more information and, and this more gifts are, you know, sprinkled in, in, you know, layered throughout that film. And when I was editing it, the answers were all right there. And I'm sitting there and I'm, as I'm working on it, I'm thinking, yes. And just became the witness and noticing patterns and noticing well, this isn't very loving. This isn't very, you know, so you can start pretty simply, you know, you don't need a lot of fancy stuff. It's just being aware. Yeah. Dr. McCullough, were you going to add something? No, I, I just think that it's important. Christina brought up a great point. I just think it's important to, you know, consciousness is everything. And we don't have consciousness. We are consciousness. So I think that the more we tune into the fact that we are consciousness, the closer we get to tap into a lot of our interactive tendencies with ourselves. And our consciousness brings light, puts the light on, on subjects and different scenarios and different behaviors that we otherwise perhaps didn't experience before. So I think subconscious needs to be over, overcome with super conscious. That's the way I, I look at it. So super consciousness is what I talk about as being a way to, to change that, to transform that, to, to, to not only know it, but to be able to disengage it and to be able to start a new process of healing of self, love of self, and of clarity. Excellent. Oh, it's so powerful. In terms of um, where people can find this film, maybe to share for a minute where we can, because I, I already know I'm going to get bombarded if we don't ask you that. Where can we find you? Where can we find this? I mean, I'm certainly going to watch this again and again. Um, it, it, it was... It, it is that kind of film, I must say. Like I, I thought I consumed it and my whole being was aligned with it. And I feel like I want to watch it again and again. And it's just so inspiring. You can get a, a you can get a lot out of it by passing through again if if you want to do that. Um it's it's simple. It's on the way of miracles.com, which actually will direct you into a Vimeo streaming. Uh, so it's streaming on Vimeo. And uh, in January it'll be up on Gaia. And um, yeah, but those are those are the two places where you'll be able to watch the film now. So when you can rent or buy it on Vimeo, and the book is on Amazon. The book's lots of places, you know. Beautiful. So one of the questions I always like to end with, and this is perfect for both of you, is I call them heart flares, where your heart. Maybe there was a question I, I didn't ask, or there's just something on your heart that you'd like to share um, that's coming forth, um, you know, that, that, you, that you feel would be really um, beneficial, inspiring to everyone tuning in. And so I'll just 
very open-ended ask if either of you have any heart flares or anything that you feel is on your heart you would like to add that I haven't asked you or that you'd like to share now. Interesting. Well, when I was hearing a lot of questions from you, it's, you know, where to start or how do we get, how do we get there? And I guess I would just like to re-emphasize, you know, start where you are. Be aware of the space and what's right in front of you. And simple steps, small steps, daily gratitude practice. And that could just be just like how, well, we, you didn't record this part, but we started with a little intention on our hearts. Just by, even if you notice when you are in discomfort, to shift into a place where you're just witnessing that. And you just put your hands on your heart and have compassion for yourself and have a gratitude practice of what else you're grateful for. That grows, that grows and will shift. And then the next thing will come forward that, you know, maybe you're going to start a, 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 a long daily, you know, meditation practice or a yoga practice, or um, you're going to cut sugar out of your diet. Hopefully that's one of the first thing you do, but, <laughs> but it's, it's a, it, it's becoming aware and then developing a practice and that's your gateway in and it will show you the next thing. You know, you build a trust there. It'll show you the next thing. I'd say that in this world that we live in currently, perhaps there's nothing more important than miracles right now. And I think that the message of the book, the message of the film are not just about how to make miracles, but how to get, how to get in touch with the fact that you are a miracle. Everybody that watches the film, you're a miracle. Everybody that reads the book, you're a miracle. Tap into the reality that you are a miracle. And miracles aren't so far away when you start to realize that you're comprised of them. I, I have zero. <laughs> I don't want to say anything else that was so powerful. I just, um, wow, I, I'm so grateful for both of you. I'm grateful. Dr. McCullough, for your just following your heart and living in a world of infinite possibilities and, and really sharing how this for all of us. And Christina, I'm so grateful for your genius and brilliance and taking what Dr. McCullough does and making this understandable and workable and just the way you've really created this, this space for us to see miracles in action. Um, and I think what I'm just feeling at the end, it's it's like, oh yeah, hello. Maybe that's the mantra every morning. I am a miracle. Because that 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 vibration, that energy, that activates that activates that love at a higher level. At least that's what sure. I'm feeling. That's right. Sure. Of course. Beautiful. Well, I just, I really want to acknowledge and honor both of you. This has been, I've been so excited about this conversation. I'm actually going to go back. This is Dr. McCullough's book. If you're watching um, The Way of Miracles, which is also the name of the film and definitely going to watch it again. Um, I actually want my children to watch it with me and get them involved in that. <laughs> um, and I just thank you for sharing so much really beautiful wisdom that I know is going to resonate with everyone listening at a very, very deep level. And I think you're, what you both said is so right. I can't think of a more important time right now is to remember we are the miracle. I really, that just whew, went right here. Um, so thank you. And, and just grateful that you were here and to share your, thank you, Julie. your thank heart. You. Christina, nice to see you. Nice to see you, Mark. <laughs>